Uh, yeah, we... I would go every single day if I can. Uh, like for example. So the argument, the counter argument from Nigeria is that if you have time to go to the gym, you don't have time to make money. What do you think about that argument? That's not true. Um, you you prioritize the you prioritize the amount of hours you have in a day. That's just what it is. If I am not um, working, then whatever free time I have, especially if like if I'm about, then I go gym. Mm. So if there's no time wasting it on something else. I rather just I'm done. I'm productive. Now I can go gym. You can go back to being productive. So why do you go to the gym? You go to the gym for the ladies, or do you go to, the gym uh, to keep your no, mind man. fit? Come on. Um, started going gym when I was about what, 18? So I've been doing this shit for quite a bit. And it wasn't gal them. It's, <laughs> it wasn't it's definitely not gal. Uh, no, no woman can motivate me to do what I've been doing like for so long, no. Interesting. Um, you know, um, first of all, it was to kind of like um, test myself constantly to test my limits and yeah. to constantly like, you know, prove um, to myself that, okay, I could go beyond it. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes. Boom, boom. So, new episode, new new ways. We have some people in the episodes. <laughs> Wait, actually, first of all, if you're watching this right now and you're seeing the settings a bit changed, right? There's a reason why, and I'll tell you. S decided to leave us in Lagos and run away. <laughs> she can't stand the heat in Lagos. Huh? She can't stand the heat in Lagos. What well, S, why would can you give us an explanation? What's going on? What's going on over there? Because she's joining us from London, by the way. Yeah, I'm live in LDN. I feel like um, I was in Lagos for so long, like a year and a half. So I needed a break. And uh, I'll see you, man, next year. <laughs> wow. Anyways, but Without, with that going forward, we know that we've got some amazing guests in the studio like we always do every week for, for you guys. We've got my man, my G, right? The, the sports guy, the football guy, coach. I mean, the ladies man. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo. That intro is good, right? it? Right? No, no. I was just like, yo. No, no, no. no. Cameras, on? please put, put the camera on him. You can see he's a ladies man. Bro, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways... We've got Frederick. Frederick, what's up, man? What's good? Oh, I'm good, my brother. I'm so so good, I, w- I, want, I want S to give me the honor because S knows you a little bit more. And she knows your, how you guys, man. I want to really know because I'm a bit suspicious, you know. S, how'd you meet Frederick? Bro, like, <laughs> you, you know, tell this story, yeah? Tell this story, please. So, yeah. in, in, in typical nerdy fashion, I took myself to Lagos Startup Week last year. And I was going around all the booths, networking, <laughs> And I came across a booth which got me very gassed because everyone knows I'm really gassed about teaching languages to, um, you know, African children. I feel like you should pass the language down. So at his booth, they had an app that could teach you all kinds of African languages. Spoke to him. He said he's from Mani. You know, obviously the muscles were there, but that wasn't what it was about. It was about... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. That was a defining factor, yeah? You think that's accurate? Who's class? <laughs> is that accurate? No, no. Well, roughly. <laughs> roughly. Roughly, isn't it? You know, back then, when Life for Me was pretty much about operations back then, yeah, we we made Lagos uh, Stop Week. So, it was very interesting because I remember, I think she said something about looting and I was like, yeah, it was dead. And I, I didn't let her rest about looting for like all of like what? Five minutes. I just kept reminding how Loon was a dead place to be. Isn't that where um, Alpha Male, what's his name, Andrew Tate's from? It's Luton. Luton. <laughs> I don't know. He always talks about me from Luton. Well, if, that, yeah. if, if it's true, you're catching the court. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's looking long for you guys. He's, I he's can't lie. Luton, yeah. I can't lie. No, that's dope, man. So yeah, anyway, so you moved. So you also you were in London for a while or where were you in London? Uh, you moved to Nigeria? Uh, no, Portsmouth actually. It was in Portsmouth for... For a bit, Jesus Christ, God, I was in Portsmouth for a bit. Yeah. Um, so I got to England, let's say, when I was about seventeen-ish, ish. Okay, nice, 17, nice. Yeah, they're about. So gone for college as well. Done college, then obviously 
undergrad, then undergrad, then done my master's. So, you know, that was a, an entire experience for me. Like then, um, that entire phase of life. Then after that, it was kind of like, okay, what next? What what do I do? Do I stay here and try to pursue life, you know, here? And um, it was also, do I come back and, and finish up? Because I... Uh, had studied law mm. so I was done with that and at the time I was considering moving back it was basically I had just finished my master's so I had done business in for, for my master's as well so it was a thing where okay now do I run with this law thing just wrap it up so yeah, yeah, come, come law yeah. school do that and then just tie up and then um, see what I'll go on like particularly after that so most people obviously that I think we have this philosophy in IMB we feel like people who move back to Nigeria Something must be wrong in the head. Like, why would you move back to Nigeria? What, what would you say uh, about that? You know what? Yeah. Initially, when, when I, when I first like obviously came back to do law school, one thing I was always saying to myself was, when I'm done with this thing, yeah, me gone. You're leaving. <laughs> so you're about to reject where like, again? <laughs> I was just like, I was like, no, my. But the truth about it is, one thing that a lot of people tell you when you get back is the opportunity that Nigeria gives you that you don't necessarily feel like any other place could give you, mm. particularly as a Nigerian. So you feel like there's this world of possibility when you come back and then you it's, you get so lost in, you get so lost, sucked in. Yeah, into, and Ni then, into Nigeria. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and you can see, like, uh, and, and business people will tell you all the time that Nigeria just looks like an endless, like a bottomless sea like, of of opportunity. Mm. And then you literally think that if you can get it right, if you just do something right, and then you can just that 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 little change, mm. just uh, mm. if you can do it, you're set, you're good. And it, it's 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 one of those things. And I, I think it was also um having Do you think that's true though? Like if you get that little thing right um, then you're good. I think part of that uh logic is true. I definitely think like there's so much opportunity in Nigeria to be explored, particularly because we haven't necessarily um, defined a lot of industries where there's structure that, you know, is very rigid, right? There's still such fluidity, flexibility mm. in, in Nigeria and sometimes good, sometimes bad. We will, I would admit that. But there's so much to work with and that is why the, I, the possibility exists. Because there's so much to work with. There isn't like a rigid um, structure in some, you know, industries, sectors. And then when you come into those industries, you see the possibility that if you can, let's say, add some sort of structure, you know, you can put something concrete, then you give, you know, yourself this, you know, um, leeway or you put yourself high up to you know give yourself a chance to to earn a lot mm. because you've implemented structure you've put in something different and you've brought something outside that we don't necessarily have so that is particularly one of the things that keeps luring people back if okay, you know yeah, like they're... people are always like if i can go in and i implement this i'll be good you know mm. i'll have brought a solution so now, what i mean also i know that you're in kind of the football industry and we'll yeah. talk a little bit about that but what are kind of the challenges that you think you faced when you first moved back with kind of the activities that you're doing um i think one of the major things is understanding that nigeria in itself has its own unique um climate when it comes to like the market nigeria in itself is not like the global market forces that run in other parts of the world may not necessarily run the same way you think in nigeria so I think those are some of the things that actually have become difficult. Learning, okay, what exactly works in Nigeria? How can I go about maybe gathering the resources I need and not just gathering the resources, sustaining the source of that? So mm -hmm. a lot of things that um, we, 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 that kind of happens, you know, um, that is difficult in Nigeria is kind of understanding, okay, just what exactly am I getting myself into? Just what exactly do I need to put in place? Where am I going to get all the things I need to finance my business? The sort of maybe if it's finance, credit, how am I going to get a constant line of that? Mm. If it's um, you're into production, how am I actually going to get materials to do what I need to do? Where is it coming from? How do I ensure this source is 
um, continues, how it's, th those are some of the things that, you know, when you come back to Nigeria, you kind of need to get a hold of. Because again, like I said, a lot of things are not rigid. Mm, a lot of yeah. things are very all over the place, uh, very uh, underdeveloped. So, uh, S, I want to ask a question on this, though. Do you, do you, would you agree with uh, Frederick on that, saying that the development, the, road, the speed of development in Nigeria is not fast enough? Would you, would you say something like that? Is that what you're trying to It depends on the across? sector. I don't know. Um, um, sh uh, maybe S is going to have like a completely different take, but it depends on the sector. In my opinion, it depends on the sector. Mm. What do you think, S? Yeah, no, I think that um, it's a lot slower because they're very inefficient. I don't know if it's the sun, people drag their feet along. I don't know if it's the lack of trust as well. You know, like, if, you tell, if, some, if you're in London yeah, and you say, okay, this is going to be done by Tuesday, it's going to be done by Tuesday. In Nigeria, if you don't chase them on that Tuesday, you won't even get it done by Thursday. So they're a bit more lackadaisical when it comes to business. Um, and we don't respect time as well. We don't respect time. That whole like African man's timing, we think it's banter, but it actually affects the pace of productivity. So I definitely agree with you that things move a lot slower, a lot, lot slower over here. But it's an opportunity for project managers to come in and, and, and change the game. Yeah, no, there's a huge opportunity around that. So I think what I wanted to do is just tap into the, uh, I think S always mentioned this uh, philosophy called the Nigerian spirit about how we have the spirit that allows us to excel in kind of enabling environments. And I want to just uh, recently talk about uh, an experience of, of Nigerian spirit that I saw recently, mm -hmm. which was uh, the lady, the cook, the Hilda mm -hmm. lady, which mm -hmm. did 100 mm -hmm. hours mm -hmm. of uh, cook, yeah, cook yeah. fun, right? That was yeah. actually quite impressive. So, you can see that the, the the Nigerian spirit came together to celebrate her. That was a kind of a nice moment. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to kind of uh, highlight on those kind of positive moments that we have more than the negatives because everywhere else there's always a lot of negative about like Nigerians and things that we do. But I think there's more positive for us to celebrate on. What would you say like is the positive of business in Nigeria, being in Nigeria and Nigeria overall? Like, what are you talking about? This is like we are dominating on this or with this area, no one can get to us in this area, what would you say? Uh, when we are determined, when you meet a determined Nigerian, it is one of the greatest forces you can ever see on the planet. There's a lot of proof. We have succeeded in places where you think we shouldn't as um, individuals. Uh, call it medicine, call it tech, call it sports whatever the field is a determined nigerian is a freak of nature but this is the interesting thing mm. and when you were highlighting the spirit of nigeria um i had this mini conversation with someone and the reason we have that spirit sometimes mm. is to live a decent life i'm not even trying to say to live a wealthy life to live a decent life Nigeria forces you to be beyond exceptional. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so you true. cannot be average. You can't be average. In exactly. Nigeria and, and you survive, cannot be yeah. average and live a good life. You you have to be better. You have to be better than good. Mm. And because we are, obviously, statistically, obviously, we are one in every five black persons in Nigeria. So based off that, if you put that number just across, you're going to get so many determined people just by sheer numbers. And then you can see that translates to how we can be so good individually yeah. because of this drive to be beyond average, to be better than good, to, you know? So another thing I've noticed, I don't know if you guys noticed this, I think um, Nigerians in general are very good at being good individually, but not being, being good as a group. Yeah. Do you feel there's like an individualistic mindset that's going on when we're, either forming organizations, being in sports, being in music, whatever it is. Because I've seen that a lot. Organizations together is, is a mm. lot of uh, challenges there, but individually, there's exceptional mm. talent. I think, you know, you know what, in that example I gave, if you're trying to be better than average and you're trying to live a good life, unfortunately, that mentality cannot let you n carry too many people along. You must understand that that sometimes in the search for maybe to make it to be great, 
they tell you this all the time. There is this loneliness that comes to it. So sometimes it happens, but also it's maybe down to some cultural things. Yeah, I mean, that, that taps into the philosophy of like, if you want to move fast, you move alone. And if you want to move further down or far, you move with a group of people, yeah. right? So that, I'm just still saying that I still feel like yeah. there could be... Yeah, there's so many things. Like, for example, Nigeria as a country, mm. even down to a history, getting independence, getting some things, did not always come from us being a united front. It came from some people having a good idea and some people mixing that with some interest, yeah. which other people bought into. There wasn't an overwhelming sense of we needed to come together to do stuff as one. And it plays out because, and this is one thing I would let you, somebody said to me, and I know I'm going to say this a lot because I've learned so much from just people and conversations around. If you notice, the reason why sometimes it cannot work in Nigeria is some people see themselves, first of all, as where they are from, not Nigerians. So it's hard to now get with other people with that same mentality when you're already, in your own sense, individualistic. But the, the, the counter-argument that is we're not, we don't have a single thing that holds us together. So in a lot of uh, countries, uh, developed countries or developing countries who have actually figured out ways to move forward, they have things that hold them together, such as religion, Mm. Right, like they have a single religion, single mm. language, and all these things. We're a little bit more dispersed in that way. True, um, but also we must understand that as a society, we're still so very young in our experiment called Nigeria. Um, every developed society that in quote that sometimes you think about, and obviously there'll be exceptions, but every society that you think is developed, they have gone through um, centuries of the kind of problems that face us. Look, check history. Check the history of, it could be England, it mm. could be France, it could be Germany, it could be, there was a time they were as fragmented, as divided as what we have now. Mm. But because they've gone through the motions of societal change and they've gone through the, the ages, you can see and it's documented how they've moved from point A to point B mm. and how they formed maybe by an event, a seismic mm. event people start to bond and people recognize that they need to be together. A good example of this, Rwanda. Rwanda had the civil war. Mm. They were possibly one of the most divided countries you could ever think of. Post civil war, Rwanda started to say to itself, yo, we're not just these two tribes. Yeah. No, Separate. we are, we are we're, exactly, yeah. we're one now. Yeah. They stopped seeing, and, but it took that seismic event to, to kind of get that yeah. to happen. You know, something similar, you know, it wasn't really a uh, civil war, but something similar happened in Nigeria uh, in 1914 with the amalgamation of the North mm -hmm. and South, right? So where um, I think one of the colonizers, I don't know, I, I can't name exactly oh, who. Oh, come on, my name's like, come on, Lord Lugard, <laughs> Frederick. <laughs> is, he your, is he your good friend of yours? Bro, I couldn't live it down in secondary school. Yeah, man. but anyways, yeah. obviously they, they, they amalg mm. amalgamated North and South mm -hmm. together, right? But the question is, was Nigeria more prosperous when we were divided? Um, if to say we're more prosperous, I would say that it's kind of a lie. I think some of the most our best moments has been together, if we're being very honest. The only thing that you could say that about Nigeria is we've not gotten to the point where there is a there's an interest that supersedes culture, supersedes religion, mm. that supersedes all these little differences. We haven't gotten that like I said, seismic event. Yeah. And I keep going down. You could check history. Every country civilization that then comes together is as a result of maybe some seismic event that tells everybody, look, you need to drop this right now because it doesn't matter anymore. Because you're going to end up killing everyone. <laughs> Rather, something like that. Yeah. But I don't, I don't pray that that sort of event for Nigeria is something that needs to be violent. Yeah. I hope it's something that a, a good sense of realization that comes, okay, yo, mm. we need to wake up, right? Yeah. Nothing over the top, nothing that needs to be violent, nothing that needs to be dramatic that we've seen maybe in history, yeah. right? I That's what I hope. But if you know, if you look down in history, these things have happened where these events kind of come and then people try to drop, mm. you know, all these different, you know, differences and then just move on and come together. Yeah, History always repeats itself. No, you're right. Yes, yeah. hey, so what, what do you think about this? What, what, what's on your mind? What are you thinking about right now? 
can hear us? No, you know I'm, I'm Africa and everything, but you know what I actually wanted to know from Frederick is how do I keep getting gains in the gym? Because Rolak, <laughs> that's that's mad. That's mad. We, um, yeah, consistency. The conversation, but like, let me know. It's, it's, ladies and gentlemen, it's always about gains. Wait. It's about them gains, just saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, just consistency, man. I've been, I, I always say to people when people ask me, like, and they want to go start gym and they want to make this work, mm -hmm. I literally go, yo, the one thing you have to do is stick with it. I swear to God, you're going to start sometimes, results ain't going to show, and um, body types are different. Right, so for some people, they're blessed with good genes. So sometimes that plays a little factor. Mm. It's not a defining factor, but it's a it's a little. How factor. many hours you spend in the gym in a week? Uh, I don't know how many hours. How but many I know, days you go to the gym uh, a week? I would go every single day if I can. Uh, like for example. So the argument, the counter argument for Nigeria is that if you have time to go to the gym, you don't have time to make money. What do you think about that argument? That's not true. Um, you you prioritize the you prioritize the amount of hours you have in a day. <laughs> That's just what it is. If I am not um, working, then whatever free time I have, especially if like if I'm about, then I go gym. Mm. So if there's no time wasting it on something else. I rather just I'm done. I'm productive. Now I can go gym. You can go back to being productive. So why do you go to the gym? You go to the gym for the ladies, or do you go to the gym uh, to keep your no, mind man. fit? Man, come on. Um, started going gym when I was about what 18. So I've been doing this shit for quite a bit, and wasn't gal them. <laughs> it's, it's it's definitely not yeah. uh, no no woman can motivate me to do what i've been doing like for so long no interesting um you know um first of all it was to kind of like um test myself constantly to test my limits and yeah. to constantly like you know prove um to myself that okay i could go beyond if i work hard enough if i train hard enough if i disciplined enough yes then i can do this so that's the progression for me it was when i first started it was okay this is my pr how can I smash it in two weeks? Mm -hmm. How can I smash it in a week? And just bam, bam, bam. So it was all about testing myself constantly. That's that's what it was about for me. I mean, that's it. Yeah, that's the, I'm I'm recently getting back into the gym. Yeah, shout, shout, out, that, shout out to new friends that I've made that have been dragging me back into the gym. But um, it, it's been a struggle. I'm not gonna lie. The first day, first day back, that pain you yeah, get. Yeah, always day, kills oh, you. Oh it? my god, yeah, I'm, still like feeling it. I'm still feeling like it. But anyways, I know that you're into. Um, Say that again, S. Go ahead. What were you saying? What about the food? I actually feel like it would be grateful for our listeners to get advice. You know, if you're going to the gym, what kind of Nigerian food can you eat that won't work against that physique? Oh yeah, true. Uh, it depends. Um, there are there are different aims. Um, for example, if you're gonna your diet would be kind of different. If you're trying to bulk, if you're just trying to gain mass, it'll be kind of different. There'll be there'll be a lot of like protein in there. There'll be you know, carbs in there, that is, if you're trying to bulk, obviously those are for people who are more like bodybuilders, you know, that's what they'll do. Uh, if you're trying to lose weight, obviously, then you got to take carbs away slowly. So basically, half of the Nigerian foods are done. No, 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 no. You see, this is the thing, actually, and I've always cried out for this, that people need to realize that there needs to be some, like, fitness roadmap especially for Nigerian food. Not all Nigerian food is bad for you. Nigerian food isn't bad for you. In fact, ooh, think we no nah, i should come back in the yeah. way yeah nigerian food isn't necessarily bad for you so i think that's the thing all we need to know is if it's done in obviously moderation and everything mm -hmm. right so carbs are not bad just too much is bad for you yeah if you don't regulate it it's bad the, the, the in itself rice ain't bad for you but if you do it too much and then you're hit. not exercising, obviously, then it will be bad for you. Yeah. So it's the same thing with our food, actually. Like, our food is good, it's rich. But obviously, if you go over the top, man, and then if you're eating more than how many wraps of fufu, come yeah, on, bro. Work, yeah. Come on, bro. It's, it'd be like that. All right. So, so I know, right, mm. that you're into uh, football. Mm -hmm. You're a football coach. Yes, and yes, you, I am. And, and you have a couple of teams in Nigeria. Yeah, we well, have one team now. One team, one team Nigeria, one right? Team. <clears throat> so one tell me team. the business about... I, I'm more, we're a business podcast and we're more interested in the business of things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we want to know, or I would like to know, and the audience hopefully, uh, what is the business of that type of uh, a sport? So in terms of, do you do you currently find talent, um, develop the talent, and then sell the talent off to a better team? How does mm. it really work? Uh, so we are primarily into 
talent spotting, developing, and marketing. So um, as a football club, that's what we do. So it's basically to get um, players from our ecosystem, obviously in football, and then to Europe. Right. So that's um, the long and short of it, really um, taking players from one stage, which is ours, and then putting them in the next phase, which is Europe. Yeah. Any notable players that we, that you can mention that you've uh, supported? Above Femi Martins. So you actually supported Above Femi yeah. Martins? That's right cool. when he was in secondary school as well. That's good. Cool. Um, that was not me. I was too young at the time. I was, but that was my dad. So shout out to OG, the man behind it all. So um, yeah, my dad um, found Above Femi Martins. Funny enough, he went to Europe, I think, a day after I wrote Wyek or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know it was a mad story in there. And then... Um, um, so there was that, but he's all the first game to play for was the Inter Milan, was it? No, he he, he played for a little club, I think Regina. That was the name of the club then. Then he moved to Inter, okay, but it was yeah. so quick as well because I think he was in Regina for like a really short amount of time. Then the Inter, Inter snapped him up, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was really mad because we were like, yo, yo, yo. yo it was was quick. Yeah, it was yeah. quick. Um, but right now, currently, we have um, Franco Yeka, okay, who is in Brentford. We, oh, nice. Yeah, we have. Um, Paulo Noachu, who is in Southampton. Oh, nice. um, and we have, um, what's his name now, in Club Brugge, which is um, Wandike. Mm. So, Rafael. So, yeah, we've... Uh, all across Europe, actually. So, 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 so give me a bit of quick maths on, on, on the process, right? So, let's say... Um, art, sorry, sports development. Because I think mm-hmm. about uh, footballers like artists, right? So, that's what mm-hmm. I think about artists. But in, in, the, in the music world, we call it artist development and there's mm-hmm. a budget for that right, mm-hmm. before they get signed. Mm-hmm. So in sports world, what do you guys call it? Is it like a f- footballer development, talent development? How do you um, call it? It's, it's just talent development. It's just a name. Like in, in general, it's just talent development. You talent just development. develop. Okay. So how player. much do you reckon it costs to develop an average footballer to the point that he can get signed? I, I feel like if I start, like, it's basically giving people information free. Never give people what you're good at. <laughs> um, but no, it does cost a lot. I don't think people understand what it costs to actually every single day train the player in the, in the right environment. Mm. So obviously you have to have your own facilities. Or if you're not having yours, you have to rent one, which is one side of it. If you're going to take care of the players, you've got to feed the players. You have to feed the players every single day. You know, that in itself is also another cost of it. You have to transport the players, you know, mm-hmm. that goes into it. Um, for matches, you have to, most teams rent stadiums in Nigeria, so you have to pay rent per per game for a stadium. Um, there's that as well. There's even the travel, the commute sometimes yeah. to go to games. You know, if you play in like the league we're playing, you go from one state to another. So um, it go- it takes a lot to run a football club. Uh, it's not cheap. Not cheap, uh, is it's it? It's not cheap. It's really not cheap. <laughs> so as a man in sports mm. and someone that has very high intelligence, we have got a couple <laughs> of questions for you, right? So this is the, the sports trivia, right? Mm. So um, if you know the answer, you just say the answer. If mm-hmm. you don't know the answer... You have to guess the answer. Okay. So you can mark you wrong. <laughs> so the first question is, right? What is the world's record for the most push-up in one hour? I don't bloody know. I don't... I don't know. Let's say a thousand in an hour? I don't know. It's, it's, it's one hour. Two thousand. Let's say two thousand. Close? Two thousand. Is that 000. your final answer? No, that's my final answer. About 2,000. Uh, you're there, but not accurate. It was 2,806. You know what? I'm a- Achieved by an, an individual named Carlton Williams in the UK in 2017. 2,806 in, in, in one hour. One hour. So basically, he was averaging what? I can't calculate, but you probably know what. That's right. Second trivia question. Okay. Ready? Who is the... Famous Nigerian bodybuilder known for incredible strength and muscular physique. Nigerian Nigerian oh, power, bodybuilder. Power Mike? What? Is that it? I don't know. Is mm. that Nigerian bodybuilder. Current. Bodybuilder. Current. Like, alive now. Uh, I don't know if he's alive or dead, but he's a very famous Nigerian bodybuilder. bodybuilder. Yep. Well, like, Charlie, do you really think that I'm just a bodybuilder? <laughs> because these questions are killing me. He's... Um, I ain't got no clues. Uh, Mm-mm. The answer. Um, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, bodybuilder, uh, Vincent Obi, is that one? Is that him? No. No, no, no. no. You're not even no? close. Oh, okay, give up. Who is that? This brother's name sounds like he's from Mexico, so it doesn't what? sound Nigerian. Romario Dos Santos. 
What? Alves. Also known as the Nigerian Hawk. He sounds like a Mexican, what? <laughs> Mexican I brother. Never heard of that, Donnie. What? <laughs> Sorry, like brother. A... Like, I'm sure you're doing your thing, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying, what? Anyways, first question. You've got two wrong already. Bro. Oh my God, you're not doing well at this No, this is... This, you sounded very confident at the beginning gym, as well. This is gym stuff. Like, no, no, gym so, specifics. I, it's not even like what you're doing. The, I'm you know disappointed. Cool, cool. I'm disappointed. Right, boy. What is the term for the process where the body burns fat in the absence of carbohydrates? Oh, this is escaping me for fuck's sake. You want a clue? Oh, please give me a clue. It begins with a K. Ha ha. The S, I don't think this guy is it, you know. Ah, uh, bro, <laughs> this thing is at the top of my... The way, the... You say, say... Wait, wait, wait. When you don't eat carbs. So, but I'm going to repeat the question. Yeah. Time. What is the term for the process where the body burns fat in the absence of carbohydrates? The body's burning the fat. Body's fat. So, in so the basically, you ran out of carbs and then your body now starts oh, burning fat. Bro, I. You know, I just did this shit like a couple of weeks ago. I will exam. save you. It's called ketosis. I, I don't know. Ketosis? I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know the answer, but like, I just read it. It's called ketosis. <laughs> All right, you've got two more questions. I, know, I basically got three wrong. No, no, you got I two more questions. I can't do any worse. You, you, can, I, you, can, you, can, you can review yourself. You, you can actually, you can actually I, I, save I, I, yourself I, 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 here. Let, let's see. What is the largest muscle group in the human body? The largest muscle group Has in the human body. Has to be your legs. Body. Has to be your legs. Hmm. The largest muscle group. Muscle, the largest muscle group in, in the human body. Where the most muscles is found. In the human body. In the human body. The largest muscle group. I'm damn not. I'm surprised it's not legs. Glutes. Don't they count? Do, does it not count? Not, does that count as legs? Does it has to count? What do you mean does it count? Come on. That is basically your lower body. Come on. Come on. It's your yash. Yeah, your yes. buttocks. It's not legs. <laughs> yes. Yes, but it can't. It's got to be. It's got to count. All right. All right. Your last you know, question. You know yeah. Okay. Cool. Your last question, right? Oh, yes, this is a hard question. Anyways, what is the rarest blood type often known as the golden blood and why is it the o most positive? important for athletes? What? The golden blood type? Mm. And why is it important for athletes? Raw, boy. You, 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 as, a, as, as a coach, you should know this. The golden blood type? I, I'm just saying. It's the rarest blood type. It's also known as the golden blood. Rarest blood type? What is it? And why is it important for at least? We can leave the why, but because but that would be a bit too complex. But let's say, what is the rarest the blood rarest type? Rarest blood type. Yeah. So you want the answer? Are you are you, are you, you know forfeiting? What? Fuck it, I forfeit. Like, what's it? R H null. That's what it's called. Okay, and why is it important? I'm really, uh, I'm really okay, I'm going to read it properly, right? Mm -hmm. So the rarest blood type is RH0. It's mm -hmm. called the golden blood because it's incredibly rare, incredibly rare, but can be given to nearly anyone who needs a blood transfusion. All right, I thought it was like... Yep. Uh, this is this could be crucial for athletes who may need emergency treat, uh, medical treatment. So I, I thought it was O positive, actually, because like, I know O positive is like the go-to for... Um, people who just need blood, that you can give blood to anybody. Uh, I heard that too. I don't know if that's accurate, but it looks like from the research that Shalewa has been doing, we found a new one that we didn't know. Okay. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Shalewa. Thank you. So, but the final question before you go over the end of the day, if you were the president of Nigeria, what would you do differently? Um, try and sell Nigeria to Nigerians and let Nigerians know there is a lot more in our unity than there is us being divided, to be fair. I can only imagine what we are like if we all worked as a single mind. And I think it's because we're too, there's, we don't have the right um, notion of what we are. I think that's one thing. And be active in trying to let Nigerians know what is good about this place. Mm. Because I don't think anybody tells you what's so great about Nigeria. Sometimes you find out on your own, right? So there isn't enough being done about letting people know um, what is good with us sticking together, what we stand to gain, you know, where we could be. A lot of the times what is being put out there is obviously apart from the negativity is just what each person can gain in their own little way, not what we stand to gain as a collective. So to actively let Nigerians, you know, buy into the concept of actually a united country, I think that's something that I would actually do differently. Super dope. Nice meeting you, man. All right, Good thanks, chat. my guy.
There we go. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes.